Hello friends, so we are into the week 11, the penultimate week of this MOOCs course on fundamentals of nuclear power generation and uh, in this week we are going to have two lectures like in the previous one, uh, today's one and also one to follow and over these two lectures we are going to discuss about the topic of reactor safety and security, which is something uh, very much relevant to the modern day concepts or also that is something like in the previous week that we have discussed about the effect of radiation on uh, biological tissues on human being, which is something of uh, great concern to the common people. This is also something in the same category and also the one to follow in the next week that is again something we are very much concerned about the disposal of nuclear waste. So, the safety and security of nuclear power plants is uh, of paramount importance because uh, whenever there is an accident in say in a common thermal power stations of course, there will be huge amount of uh, loss uh, depending upon the situation there can be significant amount of loss of life, significant amount of loss of vegetation and also there can be huge amount of property damage. But generally that is an one time occurrence that is once the incident happens the uh, devastation will be instant and immediate and then once we move on with time for a few days or maybe uh, one month or something like that, then it will just remain as a memory, a horrible memory that accident. But that is not particularly true for nuclear accident because uh, the radiation effect that any kind of radioactive nuclear contents that always remains whether it is inside a nuclear plant or it is somewhere outside. And therefore, whenever there is some uh, nuclear accident happening there is every chance that corresponding radioactive elements may get uh, transferred to the corresponding surrounding environment, may get tra transferred to somewhere far a far distance apart by the movement of wind and air or something like that. And uh, therefore, it can uh, not only it can uh, hamper a huge amount of uh, a, a large uh, population and also uh, a significant uh, area around the plant instantaneously, but also it can have long term effect. Long means I really mean very long term effect, because some of those isotopes like we have already seen certain isotopes of uranium and plutonium can have extremely long half life. And therefore, if they are allowed to come out of a nuclear reactor and get transferred to the surrounding they can uh, keep on decaying over a very very long period thereby transferring those hazardous beta and gamma rays to the human being and also to the neighboring vegetation. That is why the safety issues of nuclear power plant is uh, something that we need to be much more concerned about compared to any normal coal based thermal power station. Uh, in the previous week itself we have discussed about this biological effect of radiation and I am just uh, uh, repeating that thing. Uh, just to illustrate what kind of effects the radioactive uh, decay can have. We can uh, as you know we can have two kinds of effects, one is the uh, somatic effect which is uh, immediate and also may not be immediate actually, but uh, it can be instantaneous, it can also span for, so it can also appear after a few years, uh, but still the same person uh, who was exposed to radiation for at some time will be suffering from these effects like uh, there can be cataract, if it goes into the eyes, we can have different organ failures, blood disorder, skin burn is a very common radiation damage that we can have and even the if the dose is higher it can lead to death also. But radiation can also have very significant genetic effects where it can cause mutation to the gene and thereby can get transferred to the next generation therefore by having a very long term effect. The congenital uh, effects, congenital diseases can appear, premature death is also common because it can directly affect the uh, prenatal stage, it can directly affect during the prenatal stage as well. It can cause chromosomal abnormality, abnormalities which can uh, lead to different kinds of genetic diseases and uh, the person who was exposed to radiation can get cancer in later life, in fact that can also get transmitted to the subsequent generations. Uh, genetic disorder gen subjected to not only radiation, but any kind of genetic disorder commonly are of two types. One refers to the single genetic disorder, 
where there is only a single gene which gets muted because of radiation or because of some kind of medication or some other effect which can lead to more than 4000 diseases as per the present knowledge. Single gene disorder can be passed on to the subsequent generation in several ways. However, um, uh, that depends on means how much effective it will be in the next generation they will depends on the inheritance pattern. Like uh, you can see from this figure, we know that a common uh, human being can have uh, 23 chromosomes out of these 22 are autosomes and uh, 2 are 6 chromosomes which determines the uh, genetic sorry which determines our uh, gender. So, in this particular case you can see all the chromosomes are ok, but only this 15 number 1 that is having some kind of abnormality. So, this is what we refer by the single genetic disorder. It's and uh, it can subsequently get transmitted to the next generation causing some kind of genetic abnormalities. Uh, this is an example of the same like uh, here uh, just uh, be careful about the convention that we are using or the graphical uh, convention that I mean. Here this particular one this long blue bar it refers to the y chromosome whereas, this uh, small blue bar refers to the x chromosome and uh, these are the normal crappies. Now, we know that a male person contains x y chromosome that is 1 x and y 1 y to form a pair whereas, female contains both x chromosomes. So, here we have a situation where the uh, male is normal who is having one normal x and one normal y chromosome, but the female is uh, having one normal x chromosome, but another defective copy of x chromosome or another x chromosome with a defective gene. So, once they combine there are four possible combinations we can have. Of course, we know that during the meiosis process they will be exchanging their uh, chromosomes leading to the form uh, four possible form uh, combinations. Now, if we think about a girl we will be getting one copy of x chromosome from the dad and one copy of x chromosome from the mom whereas, a boy will be getting one copy of uh, x chromosome from the mom, but the y chromosome from the dad. So, think about the mom uh, sorry think about the girls first um, the girls as they are always getting one x chromosome from the one x chromosome from the dad. So, they will always be having one normal chromosome, uh, but uh, out of uh, the two girl possible one can have this particular x chromosome getting transmitted. So, she will continue to be a carrier of the same disease. On the contrary, for the boy, they are going to have uh, the Y chromosome from the father, but uh, they are going to have the X chromosome from the mother. And uh, therefore, while uh, one boy is going to have a normal situation, the other will get affected. As the uh, girls are always inheriting one normal copy of the gene from their fathers, so they will. Uh, they will either remain normal or they can become carrier, but the boy there is every chance that they can either be normal or can get affected. On the contrary see the situation where both the mom and dad are carrying one copy of affected X chromosome, then there is a very big problem in the next generation. Every girl is getting one X chromosome from the dad which is already affected that is this one and they are also getting one X chromosome from the mom. So, it is possible that both um, the girls will always be having one affected X chromosome which is coming from the dad and they may get a normal chromosome from the from their mom like this case or they may get this affected chromosome. So, in this situation they will be having two affected X chromosomes which definitely will affect the girl. Uh, in the case of boys they are going to have this normal Y chromosome coming from their dad, but they are going to have uh, either a normal X chromosome from the mom in that case the boy will remain normal or they are going to have this affected uh, X chromosome from their mom making them affected. So, in this case the girls can get affected, boys also can get affected and the girls can also remain carrier. So, there is a 3 out of 4 possibility of the next generation being either a carrier or be getting affected by this. Therefore, genetic disorder even in case of single genetic disorder we can have uh, 
transmission to the next generation even uh, even uh, as next generation can get directly affected as well. The multifactorial and polygenic disorders are where we have much more complicated and multifactorial effects which are likely to be the effect of multiple gene in combination with the lifestyle and environmental effects. The term multi the sorry polygenic refers to when the result is the combined effect of multiple gene interaction and multifactorial refers to polygenic plus some kind of environmental or lifestyle related effects. So, there can be uh, several kinds of uh, examples actually most of them are those referred as the lifestyle diseases nowadays like uh, we can have diseases like uh, diabetes or heart diseases and also which comes from the from our lifestyles and also there can be several genetically transmitted diseases such as the Alzheimer's, we can have schizophrenia kind of diseases. There can be problem related to the intelligence level, there can be problem with the height and weight of the next generation, there can be transmutation sorry there can be mutation in the skin color or color of the eyes etcetera. So, polygenic or multifactorial disorders can be much more complicated and both the single geny and polygenic uh, characteristics or polygenic types can uh, be the results of radiation exposure. Uh, the effect of radiation exposure at the during the prenatal period, uh, pre period can be even more devastating. There can be significant modification in the genital structure like uh, look at this things. This refers to Down syndrome a uh, quite common genetically transmitted disease and in this case you can find trisomy in the 21th number of chromosome. Trisomy refers to instead of 2 there are 3 chromosomes instead of having a pair we are having a triad. And this trisomy refers to trisomy in 21th chromosome, 21 slot refers to Down syndrome, where the corresponding child uh, will be born with several uh, defects like cleft lip or cleft palate, there can be small head, eyebrows may be absent, etc. Similarly, we can have this Edward syndrome, which refers to trisomy in a uh, 18th number of chromosome. In this case, also we have several uh, significant effects like there can be malformed eyes, there can be shield chest um, and uh, the back part of the skull uh, can be very very prominent like in this situation and there are several other uh, medical symbols which they associated. Similarly, these are just two examples there can be several other cases where prenatal exposure to strong radiation can lead to trisomy of different chromosomes accordingly we can have several others like Jacobson uh, uh, syndrome can be. Jacobs syndrome or Jacobson syndrome can be other examples of such kind of things where an another where we can find this trisomy in another chromosome position. So, in a nutshell all these things uh, could have come in the previous module only, but still I am mentioning about them in this particular module just to let you know what effect radiation can have. And here this effect radiation uh, effect of radiation uh, can be from because of any radiative source, but now from now onwards we are going to focus mostly on the nuclear source and uh, we are not going to exclude the part related to medical radiation radiative sources, but uh, as a final thought there medical radiation can also be very very significant particularly during this prenatal stage and that is one of the reasons nowadays. Uh, a pregnant woman is not suggested to go for x-rays or similar kind of uh, therapies because the radiation that is coming from there can significantly affect their fetus. Now, we come to the purely nuclear based accidents or incidents which led to significant radiation hazards and uh, of course, we have to go back to 1945 to Hiroshima. We everyone probably has seen this particular image following the bombardment or following the atomic bomb uh, atomic bombing at Hiroshima on the 6th of August 1945. We saw this kind of plume formation huge amount of energy was released by uh, this nuclear bomb which was uh, I think the name was little boy and that uh, you probably have uh, seen these images also this Enola Gay is the name of the aircraft which carried that little boy and dropped that on Hiroshima. This was a picture with their uh, with their crew members 
and uh, Boxker was the uh, aircraft which carried the next one that is a plutonium bomb uh, towards Nagasaki on 9th of August. Um, you probably have seen these images also, this is the route map that was followed that is uh, they started from this transient location at Gunam, sorry Guam and uh, from there this uh, Inola gate travelled uh, via this particular path on 6th August and uh, the target was Hiroshima for this. Uh, it is uh, quite, uh, as I do not know how to explain that, but uh, you may know, you may not be knowing also. Uh, Hiroshima while it was a very much planned event, the Nagasaki was not all the target, actual target was this particular place called Pokura. The event, this second bombing the testing of that plutonium bomb that was uh, initially scheduled to be on uh, 11th August, but because of some weather conditions they preponed that brought that forward to 9th of August and Kokura was the original target, but when the aircraft this box car that arrived to Kokura it was unable to spot it because there was huge amount of bombing going on by the normal aircraft bombers. So, the entire town was covered with black smoke and uh, it was this uh, boxcar crew found this very difficult to spot that. There are two or three failed attempts and after that they decided to go to the secondary target which was Nagasaki. And uh, so, they went to Nagasaki where this plutonium bomb called fat man that was disposed of and they, they just about managed to come back to some kind of transit uh, location, uh, location actually I, I cannot remember clearly, but I think it was forced to make an emergency stop somewhere because it just ran out of fuel. Uh, but uh, our target is not to have a long discussion about what happened in Hiroshima, rather we were looking to looking towards what um, effect the radiation had in Hiroshima. And uh, for that purpose, uh, there are several documents, there are quite a few documentaries available on internet which you can uh, see to look into this. This is one uh, book which was published in 2010, The Last Train from Hiroshima, The Survivors Look Back by Charles Pellegrino. Uh, it was published in 2010, but there was uh, lots of controversies involved with this. Uh, there are several challenges regarding the source of the data that were based on which this book was written and later on the publisher apologized and uh, recognized that the source of data could not be authenticated and therefore, they discontinued the publication of this one. But in 2015, a, I cannot remember the name of that, a modified version, the second edition of this book, but with a slightly different name that uh, was published again by a different publisher. But the uh, inside the cover of this book, it illustrates the story of one Japanese person called uh, Yamaguchi, Sotomo, uh, Sutomu Yamaguchi, who was one of the double explosion survivor, what you can say. Uh, because of some kind of, uh, uh, he was an employee of a company and because of his official duty, he was uh, he went to Hiroshima or he was at Hiroshima on that 6th August morning, on that fateful morning of 6th August he was at Hiroshima just about 2 kilometers from the epicenter and uh, then when the bomb struck he somehow he survived the event, but um, he um, saw what happened there, he was able to um, uh, pass through uh, had some horrible experiences, he was able to survive through some horrible experiences and uh, then on the next morning uh, along with several other survivors of that explosion, they took a train and went back to uh, his hometown and what was his hometown? Incidentally that was Nagasaki. So, he went back to Nagasaki He uh, and uh, then uh, next day he after going back to Nagasaki, he next day went to the company to report the incident or the sequence of events that happened to Hiroshima and that particular day was 9th August when Nagasaki was under attack and uh, um, somehow he survived that one also. It is said that some uh, thing like about 165 persons were this uh, double uh, uh, 
attack survivor kind of thing. But Yamaguchi was the only person who was confirmed by the government of Japan to have survived both the effects. Uh, this uh, particular book uh, generally uh, it uh, rotates around the or uh, it uh, revolves around the experience that Yamaguchi and several other survivors have. Uh, it describes how Hiroshima from a quite busy town was transformed to a momentary version of hell among the horror. Uh, of course, uh, we do not want to go to the details of this, you know, whether there is uh, any kind of validity about the experience reported in this book or whether it was uh, very much uh, exaggerated, we do not want to discuss that, but uh, it mentions several incidents that definitely happened there. And along with and to support that there are several other photographic incidents are also available. One of the most horrific experiences the survivors found was something known as the ant walking alligators, creatures of the blood that seem neither human nor animal, neither living nor dead. I do not want to show the images of that. If anyone, any of you have strong heart, you can search on internet with this term and you can find those uh, horrific pictures. But uh, this ant walking alligators were referred to the persons who had been burned uh, by the explosions to such an extent their, uh, that uh, their uh, skin was completely taken off, their face was completely obliterated, they did not have any eyes and their mouth was uh, converted to just a hole. Of course, they died, but maybe after uh, a few minutes or a few hours, uh, it, it should not be hours, but uh, maybe 30 minutes or a uh, couple of hours. And uh, during that period, they kept on moving around the road quite aimlessly just like the ant and their skin was black and it was uh, so much uh, scaled that it was something like an alligator skin. That is why this term ant walking alligator came into play. The uh, people who were quite close to the epicenter in the outside, they were immediately obliterated. Those who were uh, close to some kind, those who were indoors, but close to some kind of in window, which was facing that uh, uh, epicenter, they also had the same fate. Those who were inside uh, and uh, was not facing that kind of in that epicenter, they is, many of them survived, but with several incidents or several uh, marks of radiation. Like those who were wearing dark color cloths uh, suffered strong effect, those who were wearing, uh, wearing white colored cloths were in a slightly better position. Uh, the, there are several photographs where you can see persons who were wearing some kind of striped cloths they uh, that particular stripe got printed on their skin. Some people were completely vaporized leaving behind nothing but a shadow. We know that whenever uh, some kind of radiation just think about maybe light, when light is coming from our from uh, some source to ours to our, um, towards us then it will create a shadow. Shadow basically refers to a zone where light was not able to reach because of our presence. The similar kind of thing happened here because of the strong radiation effect when some person was uh, in the line of that strong radiation effect, it created a shadow of that person in the associated or in uh, in the near location on the maybe on the floor or on some kind of wall, but the radiation dose was so strong the person completely vanished leaving behind the shadow. Uh, the patterns from clothing the, that I just have mentioned which is born to skin. Uh, dried husks of human beings, dried husk refers to the temperature when was so high because of the explosion that the entire uh, blood from the human body evaporated leaving behind something which resembles just dried husk. Also lots of people also did not die just, an ex, ex, uh, just a result of the radiation rather lots of people died because of the huge uh, storm or huge explosion that happens uh, because of which lots of trees were uprooted. There was pictures one 300 year old camphor tree which was uprooted and uh, then uh, things were uh, blown away by strong air and lots of people were uh, lots of people died by collision with those kind of uh, trees and other uh, heavy things which were blowing with the air. Some people are blinded instantaneously, some other took years to lose their sight. Surrounding environment was devastated by black rain. And uh, the long term effect 
of course, lasted over generation, which is the one big of biggest concern in relation with nuclear. Of course, whenever there is a bombing uh, in some location, there will be uh, severe effects, but that effect again will be limited only to a short instant of time. But uh, related to any kind of nuclear accidents or such kind of uh, nuclear weapon use, the radiation effect will uh, last there over extremely long periods. And this particular uh, image is synonymous to the Hiroshima, there are lots of wristwatches were found which uh, stopped around that 8.15, the time when the incident struck there. So, but the in a nutshell, the we are discussing about or I am mentioning about all these incidents just to show you what effect radiation can have because of the use of nuclear weapon. And now, let us come to nuclear power generation. The use of nuclear energy started from that 1945 and uh, it started with such an incident that from the very first generation of nuclear power generation, uh, nuclear power plants, scientists were very much careful about the possible hazardous effect radiation can have and what can be the possible implications of a nuclear accident. And therefore, different uh, uh, safety measures were taken from very early generation plants itself. Still, there were quite a few, uh, actually I should say there are three quite prominent nuclear accidents which happened over the over uh, last uh, 65, 70 years of nuclear history. And each of those accidents had uh, different reasons which uh, allowed the scientists to go back to the fundamental designs and mod, uh, find what are the sources of those uh, or reasons behind such kind of accidents and come, uh, come up with some kind of modified and improved design. And the first one of them was the Three Mile Island incident. It was a small island, a small river island of United States, the location is shown, shown here. This is schematic of their plant. Now seeing the schematic, can you say what kind of reactor it was? Yeah, you are correct, you can see there is a pressurizer. So, it has to be a pressure water reactor. It was a pressure water reactor, pressurized, I should say it was a pressurized water reactor or PWR, which uh, in the schematic shows all the standard components of PWR. And the incident happened on the second unit of this particular plant on March 28, 1979 early morning. Uh, some minor malfunction that caused the second reactor to shut down almost immediately and uh, a relief valve which was supposed to close, but it was uh, it did not contrary to what the instrument instrumental panel showed. In fact, some in uh, some studies it also showed that one light uh, which uh, was on the instrumentation plane that uh, lit following indicating that the relief valve was is uh, still open, but the operator who was there he misunderstood that symbol and assumed that everything is normal the valve is working perfectly. Uh, the result was uh, the when the accident starts the operator struggle to determine the problem and uh, once they do not know what the problem is they are cannot find an appropriate solution as well. Uh, so, the situation it took uh, quite some time to take the get the situation under control. Luckily, there are not too many common people around the plant uh, and it took around 16 hours and a, consist, uh, a consistent effort of 60 or more number of persons to get the situation under control. The if uh, there were hu human uh, factor that I must mention about the reason behind this accident. Critical human factor and user interface engineering problems were the primary reasons behind such an accident. The valve was being stuck open, a light on the control panel ostensibly indicated that the valve was closed. But as I have mentioned, in some cases it is also mentioned that uh, the operator misunderstood the symbol that the valve, the light was giving. The light did not indicate the position of the valve, only the status of the solid valve being powered or not, thus giving false evidence of a closed valve. And because of that, the operators uh, failed to diagnose the problem for several hours. And uh, such kind of incident has happened that came to know only after um, quite a few hours when the situation started to go out of control. The operators uh, probably were not properly trained to understand the ambiguous nature of this uh, pilot operated relief valve indicator and also 
um, they were not properly informed or pro they did not have proper experience to look for alternative confirmation that the main relief valve was closed. Uh, there is a temperature indicator downstream of the pilot operated relief valve in the tail pipe between the relief valve and the pressurizer. That could have also given the indication that the valve is open, that the temperature in the tail pipe should remain remained higher than it should have been if the relief valve was shut down. But uh, the temperature indicator was not a part of their uh, suit of indicators designed to be used after an accident and therefore, the operator did not know how to use that symbol or what how to implicate the sim that particular symbol. Its location on the back of the 7 foot high instrumentation panel also meant that it was effectively out of sight of the operators. So, the principal reason behind the TMI incident, TMI means 3 mile island, uh, we can uh, summarize as number 1 proper training of the operators. They did not have any idea about how to implicate the signals given by different sensors, they did not have any experience of uh, or they are also not properly qual qualified enough to decide what action to be taken against an uh, unknown or new kind of incident. Number 2, um, the failure of that relief valve, the relief valve and also corresponding wrong signal given by the instrumentation panel. Number 3, improper design of the instrumentation panel itself, the all the indicators were not properly placed this. Number 4, the lack of any backup option. Like once the relief valve was uh, kept open or it was stuck, only one indicator, the plant was dependent on only one indicator to show that uh, the valve is open or closed. Almost but the other symbols like other uh, possible options of indicating the same like the temperature indicator we are mentioning here, those things were not part of the safety panel and so there was no backup option corresponding to each such kind of signals. So, it is grossly you can say a negligence from the part of the designers or the lack of experience from the part of the operators which led to such kind of accidents. And this was the situation of the reactor core after the incident happened. Now, the health effect of course, the government tried to suppress that incident, they claim that uh, there are no injuries or adverse health effects from accidents. Only one additional cancer death from radiation absorption uh, resulted within uh, 50 miles of the plant, but later it was uh, uh, found that there is an increase in the infant death, also it was increase in babies, increase in number of babies born with hypothyroidism which was a result of the spreading of radioactivity, radioactive iodine and cesium isotopes into the surrounding areas. Till about late 90s, 1990s no peer reviewed article was present which provides reliable data about the rate of cancer or other effects in the post uh, TMI era. The amount of contamination was quite significant, some radiative gases and also hydrogen are released to the atmosphere, maximum of 13 million QD amount of radioactive gases were released to the surrounding, that was a quite significant number at that point of time. The maximum doses to a person at the side boundary was found to be less than 100 MREM. During the cleanup operation, uh, it took nearly 12 years to clean everything. The cost of cleanup, uh, cleanup was estimated to be about 973 dollars, about 1000 dollars to get the cleanup and during the cleanup process again several workers were contaminated with the residual radioactivity. And the plan was did not reopen till about 1985. Now, what was the effect of TMI on nuclear industry? Of course, there was effect, uh, there was radiation spread to the surrounding areas, but uh, the effect was, uh, effect of radiation was not that much because it was not. Uh, situated in a highly populated area, rather as you have seen earlier it was a river island and so apart from the workers or uh, people associated with the plant, there are not too many common people around. But there was a significant effect on the growth of the nuclear industry. As you can see from the first graph, the total install capacity kept on increasing quite rapidly and suddenly somewhere here it found a halt. This was active reactors refers to active reactors which also kept on increasing and there are additional construction that goes on. Again you can see the volume of this additional construction like it was something like this amount here 
whereas around 1975 it was like this amount. So, it also kept on increasing, but suddenly there is a decrease following this 3 mile island incident. In this zone, there is sudden decrease in the uh, capacity addition. And then something that we are going to discuss, the Chernobyl accident happened in 1986 and following that there, there is almost a saturation in the nuclear industry. There was hardly any new construction that goes on since that period of 1986 to something like 2005. So, total uh, realized capacity or installed capacity that also got stalled and uh, there are hardly any new growth in the nuclear industry. Uh, following the 3 mile island incident, the number of reactors under construction in US declined every year from 1980 to 1998 and uh, many Babcock Wilcox reactors who were the primary supplier of nuclear reactor that time in the United States uh, that were cancelled in total uh, uh, 51 nuclear reactors order or 51 orders for nuclear reactors were cancelled between 1982 to 84. So, there is a huge shake up to the nuclear industry in United States to be particular in particular in during the 3 mile island incident. But in other part of the world, uh, there were not big effect particularly in European countries till this period. Like uh, if we see from the graph, 3 mile island happened somewhere here and but still over this period of something like uh, 7 years from 1979 to about 1986 the total installed capacity kept on increasing sharply and uh, while United States were started to shut down their plants or uh, stopped any kind of new constructions, Europe continued to European countries continued to increase their installed capacity. But then we reach 1986 when we had Chernobyl incident. Chernobyl was a nuclear plant located in uh, present Ukraine which was a part of uh, that time it was a part of the United States uh, USSR. Uh, this was the reactor core. From the reactor core, can you get any idea about what kind of uh, reactor it is? Uh, let me see from the picture. Uh, you can see water is uh, flowing around. So, it is a water cooled reactor, light water cooled reactor. Uh, no other information is given, but ok. Then uh, let me add. It was uh, a light water cooled reactor or LWR, but the moderator that was used was graphite. It was quite odd combination. In module number 7, we have discussed about different thermal reactors. So, from there can you identify what kind of reactor it was? It was a graphite moderated water cooled reactors. So, LWGR or called RBMK. That time RBMK reactors were extremely popular in USSR and almost all uh, nuclear reactors, active nuclear reactors in uh, Soviet Union were of RBMK type. The incident that happened in R, uh, I think there is the sixth uh, unit of Chernobyl, it was uh, April 26, 1986, sorry it was the fourth reactor. Uh, it also happened again in uh, very late night around 1.23 am. Uh, it was not because of any faulty design, rather it was because of uh, wrongly planned or very poorly planned experiment done by the operators. Uh, the RBMK design had its own fault, but till that moment all the RBMK plants in Soviet Union were operating fine. And so, there was some kind some sense of overconfidence by uh, the operators, which led to this particular situation. They did, uh, they are doing a late night safety test on the reactor 4. The test it started on uh, April 25, but because of certain issues, it was delayed to um, this late hours. And uh, they are trying to simulate a station blackout power failure in which, uh, and uh, during that experiment, as a part of the experiment, all the safety systems were intentionally turned off. So, the system was, uh, system did not have any kind of safety system uh, under operation at the time of this experiment, which was the first major uh, mistake that they made. Uh, because of some inherent reactor design flaws and the reactor operators who uh, did not follow the proper procedure while doing the experiment that uh, led to an uncontrolled reactor operation. Uh, you probably remember that RBMK reactors one big problem with their initial designs like the one in Chernobyl, the initial design the, had the problem of positive void reactivity feedback which leads to an unstable reactor 
and that is what happened. The as the reaction went uncontrolled, it result in destructive uh, steam explosion and subsequent open air fire and that fire lasted for about 9 days. Uranium fuel got overheated and melted through the protective barrier of the reactor releasing radioactive fission products to the environment and uh, also uh, the uh, fire was so strong that it created a very strong updraft thereby creating uh, high velocity movement of air around the plant. And as the fission products were uh, emitted to the plant by the melted uh, fuel, melted uranium fuel, uh, they were carried by strong air to all the neighboring areas, uh, particularly over in all areas of Ukraine and Belarus or most part of Ukraine and Belarus, the presence of Russia and even in some parts of Western Europe. This picture shows uh, some of the affected areas. You can see even countries like Romania, almost entire of Hungary that was uh, uh, that was affected by this radiation effect. Now, Chernobyl accident is only one of the two nuclear energy accidents classified as a level 7 event on the international nuclear event scale. The second one, can you guess what is the other one? Chernobyl is uh, the first one which got a level 7 and actually level 7 I must mention is the last highest level on the scale. The other incident that happened uh, in 2011, uh, yeah I think you can guess now, it was the nuclear accident that happened in the Daiichi power station Fukushima Japan. That was also a level, level 7 incident, but uh, there the reason was something else. And uh, there nature played a big role because uh, the everything was initiated by tsunami. So, from that point of view, this Chernobyl is often termed the biggest man-made nuclear accident to have struck to have struck the wall. The biggest man-made nuclear incident that happened in the world. Initially, only two persons died in the facility following the explosion. Uh, one of the one, one died almost instantly, which is quite surprising because despite such a huge amount of explosion, only one person died on spot and the other la died later due to deadly doses of radiation. 134 people are hospitalized with acute radiation symptoms, symptoms of which 28 which includes firemen and employees died in uh, days to months afterwards from the effects of active radiation syndrome. Uh, one big problem, big uh, mistake rather was uh, made by the authorities and even by the government also. They failed to realize the difficulty level of the situation and therefore, decided to, ig decide to ignore it virtually. And uh, this sent firemen and also several other construction workers to go to the site, rescue workers I should say, to rescue the common person and the plant itself. Approximately 14 cancer deaths among this group of uh, initially hospitalized survivors we had to follow within next 10 years I should say. This is a data from 1996, so it might have increased by now. An excess of 15 childhood thyroid cancer deaths has been documented as of 2011. 600,000 more are involved in firefighting and cleanup operations who and they are exposed to high doses of radiation. As per official records, over 8400,000 people in Belarus, Ukraine and Russia were exposed to the radiation. So, just by seeing the seeing these numbers, you can get an idea about the magnitude of the event. I repeat, this is called the largest man-made accident in the world. This uh, particularly, this particular bridge, this is a new picture. It is at there was a small town called Pripyat, which was just about three mile away, located three mile away from the plant, having a population of around fifty thousand that time. Uh, in the early morning of that uh, fateful night, they heard the huge explosion and rushed to the plant, rushed to the Chernobyl plant and on their way, there was this particular bridge, which was just about 1.3 miles from the plant. So, they stood on the bridge to see what is happening. So, they waited on the bridge and saw the entire incident, uh, but they did not have any knowledge that they are getting directly exposed to very high doses of radiation. Uh, later on a medical investigation estimated that the uh, contamination on that bridge, the contamination level on that bridge was 8 times higher than what is required to kill a human being. There are no study was done later on to understand 
how many persons from this particular town died as a result of this incident, but this bridge has been named as prepared bridge of death. These are the contributions from different isotopes. Uh, as you can see, certain isotopes die down quite quickly, like iodine-131, which is a big contributor to our contributor to our thyroid because of its short half life, it died quite quickly. This is another one which died even earlier, just to less than 100 days. This is uh, terurium-132, but uh, certain isotopes continue to have a much longer lifespan like zirconium 95 is uh, in continuously increasing and then this starts to decrease because there may be certain work with the uh, there may be, uh, it increases initially and then uh, it decreases because uh, it gets produced during radioactive decay of certain other isotopes also but most interesting of them is this particular one which refers to cesium 137 it actually keeps on increasing and uh, even after a period of 10,000 days, it is extremely high and it contributes about 100 percent of the radiation level. So, uh, this is a very long living isotopes while others have almost died down by now, it is still very active. This is another figure which was taken from a study done by medicine, medicine practitioners that is which reflects the, in the increase in the thyroid cancer among child and adolescent from Belarus after the Chernobyl incident. Here the vertical axis represents uh, every uh, thousand incidents, thousand such cases and you can see around 1986 when the Chernobyl incident happened it was quite small, but it kept on increasing rapidly. For the red line refers to the children, it increases and then again uh, drops down by 2002. The yellow line for the adults, it, it keeps on increasing quite sharply, the same in the adolescent period as well. And certain isotopes like this uh, iodine-131, this uh, cesium isotopes, they are strong contributors towards this thyroid cancer and uh, therefore, they are uh, still very much active and cause in that Chernobyl and surrounding areas and uh, leading to the appearance of this thyroid cancers. On the nuclear plant construction procedure, we have already seen one picture earlier following TMI and uh, look at this, the TMI happens uh, here, after that there is a decrease and now this is Chernobyl and following Chernobyl over this entire period hardly any new construction happened till about 2006-2007 and then it started, it has started to increase but still quite random because in this period of 2011 to 2015 it is quite small and this is a global picture not for any particular country. So, following this Chernobyl incident, there was a huge lull in the nuclear industry as people are very much apprehensive about using nuclear power for commercial power generation just with the fear of having uh, the repeat of another Chernobyl. But as uh, time goes on over this uh, big lull period of about 15-20 uh, years, uh, scientists have came up with newer designs, the concept of generation 3 or generation 3 plus or even generation 4 nuclear reactors are which came up with newer designs of nuclear reactors with enhanced safety features and so then it has started to increase again the total uh, con nuclear plant construction. Finally, the lessons that we have received from TMI and Chernobyl, I am not mentioning about Fukushima here because the conclusions will be quite similar. Uh, the two primary lessons are related to emergency preparedness and response and transparency in the procedure. So, if under emergency preparedness and response, prompt notification is absolutely essential, which uh, can be uh, tested by the protective action. Exercise, um, uh, all such kind of exercise must happen with uh, complete collaboration with both local and regional officials because the absence of regional officials was one of the reason of this Chernobyl incident. Local authority did not have proper idea about what is going on and therefore, they failed to evacuate the site. Multiple units, there needs to be question answered before setting up multiple units and again what can be the option, what can be the emergency response in case of any kind of terrorism attack, which is becoming increasingly relevant nowadays. And other aspect is transparency. Safety analysis and design must be done and uh, the results should be made avail available to the concerned authorities. 
then the proprietary information security information should be made public basis of decision should be made known to everyone at least to the knowledgeable persons and uh, place regulatory documents and uh, plans on the way for stakeholder contribution so with all these lessons now we finally come to the safety objective so the fundamental safety objective of a nuclear power generation is to protect people and the environment from harmful effects of ionizing radiation this is the paramount sentence or paramount objective that any nuclear plant designers should keep in mind no way the effect of ionizing radiation should reach the human being and the environment and the newer generation generation 3 and particularly generation 4 uh, spend lots of time lots of effort uh, during the design to ensure complete uh, contamination uh, reduction or complete isolation of the ionization radiation to achieve this objective nuclear plants are designed and operated so as to achieve the highest standard of safety that can reasonably be achieved which includes the control of radiation exposure controlled um, it should be controlled release controlled release of radioactive material to the environment during particularly during the waste disposal procedure which we shall be discussing next week restrict the likelihood of an accident with inadvertent release of radionuclides mitigate the consequence of such an accident means what can be the possible types of accidents that we have to foresee and you have to be prepared for that important elements of nuclear safety are the principle of defense in depth and the definition of application of safety functions so defense in depth is the name that is given to the safety features which are used in modern nuclear power plant plants and this one we shall be discussing in the next lecture so i would like to finish uh, today's lecture here itself today we have discussed about quite a few grim topics um, the sad incidents that happened in uh, hiroshima fall and uh, then uh, the nuclear accidents in three mile island and chernobyl but i mentioned about all these incidents just to make you aware about the importance of having safety in a nuclear power station um, this is something that is of paramount importance and uh, believe me at the very first step of design uh, when the design of nuclear power plant starts the first thing the operator or the designer starts to work with is the possible safety barriers that they are going to put in which falls under this defense in depth we shall be discussing this uh, in the next introduction so thank you for now